you all right? I can hear you, mate. Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, usually that takes ages on Zoom to sort out with the audio. Yeah, yeah, I've had a lot of problems with it in the past, but it seems to be working all right. I'm just in advance. My internet is a little slow. Don't worry, um, don't worry. Tamsin, do had, Tamsin had that issue earlier because we were talking over uh, poster design, so she was. Oh right. Uh, everyone was playing World of Warcraft or something. You know what I mean? It takes over. Yeah, it? it takes takes over the whole internet. Yeah. Yeah, and imagine imagine what the uh, the usage of the internet now is, especially with people working at home and that. It must be like through the roof. Oh, yeah. I think they've been having loads of... I mean, Virgin went Yesterday, down. Yesterday, yeah. 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 Is it like that today with Virgin? I mean, I'm not on Virgin, so I'm all right, but um, I've just heard, you know, there's been loads of problems with it. I mean, I've been having problems on um, on online, on like gaming and stuff. It's just been... I think there's yeah. been loads of server issues and everything. And just It's just so overloaded with people that they can't well, handle it. I wonder what the percentage levels are of like um, Fortnite and that. It must, be th- it must be crazy, crazy amounts of gameplay going on. Server capacity yeah. must be like just being getting battered. Yeah, it must so, be crazy. Absolutely, yeah. Um, the first thing I wanted to say is your film was fantastic. Uh, we really enjoyed Thank it. You. And there's a few people I've shown it to. We've we've not showcased. I, I've repeated myself a few times about this, but I want you to kind of uh, let you know that we're showcasing them online, and we're going to try and do it locally in a cinema as well. Uh, okay. And then we're the, so the first phase of showing people the films and and yours, and obviously all the others is. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll send out a private link to a group of people. Try and get as many of the makers themselves to watch two or three of them and then get like a, a screen recording of that reaction. So if yeah. we can try and do that, I think it'd be quite a nice kind of community based thing we do is say, I send you three films and, and then you kind of see, you know, let, let us know what you think of them. Cause they're all, they're all really high standard. Mm-hmm. And there's been a, I think there's three animations now. Yours was the second one to come in. Right. And uh, so what was the title of yours? Uh, what would a fly do in isolation? Something yeah, like things, that, wasn't things it? for a fly to do in isolation, yeah. Yeah, so uh, how did that um, idea originate? Where did that kind of come from? Obviously, it's isolation, but about the fly, where, where, what was your inspiration for that? I mean, I, I, there's not, there's not any uh, direct inspiration from anything. I mean, I think, um, I think I had a weird dream one night about a fly. And um, I just woke up the next morning and thought that would have been quite a funny film. Um, and I think we're all used to you know, seeing a fly at the window stuck and trying to get out. And um, I heard it this morning, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought it'd be a good way to just, you know, represent what's going on right now, um, but try and do it in a funny, funny way, really. Yeah, that's a very good observation. And the fact that you chose to show the fly first, obviously you've got your, uh, your, your opening shot of the house. And then, um, yeah, the first shot is of the fly at the window. So that's yeah. a really that's a really good way to, for people to kind of connect with that story, and to, like a stand up comedian, you know, it's the best stand ups. They kind of refer back to simple things, but mm. then they, they everyone recognise, and you've you've done that with your film, and then it kind of <laughs> then it steps up a gear. Um, yeah, like some of your sol- uh, shot collection, I absolutely love. Um, so, how did some of that kind of composition? How did you achieve that? Like with the remote control and especially my favorite shot with the music oh uh, right yeah yeah i mean i um i just i just went around the house and just thought of different things that he could do you know to entertain himself whilst he's stuck um and then i just shot it on, on my sony camera and i uh, went around the house and just yeah set it up where i thought it looked nice and then you know in my mind i knew where he'd be in the frame so you know i lined it up to you know, match it up to that um, so, but, um... On the on that shot with the remote control, um, eventually people will realise what the hell we're talking about when they see it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How did you? Was it just purely in the lens, the shallow depth of focus? Yeah, yeah. So I've got a, a two point eight two point eight lens, so I just use that. And um, I think also it was quite dark in the in the lounge as well, so I had to open the iris anyway, so I could get that. Um, but yeah, I mean it worked well, and um, it made it feel kind of fit in more. I mean, I didn't. I didn't aim to make it look realistic. I aimed it, you know, I didn't, I'm not, I'm not an animator. This is the first time I've ever. Really you're, not, a, you're not an animator. <laughs> the first time I've ever had a crack at it. Well, mate, you've, that's, that's better than some degree films I've seen. First animation, no joke. It's better than a lot. <laughs> Cheers. And, uh, yeah. yeah. 
Very yeah, good. yeah, I've just had a bit of experience on After Effects. Um, so I just did it all, all, all on the Adobe stuff. So um, yeah, it was, it was the first time I've ever properly made a little short, animated short. So um, yeah. Uh, my biggest compliment to you would be do more, make more, definitely. Because uh, I said to Tamsin and uh, Rihanna, you're part of that group of friends, aren't you? Yeah, so Rhiannon's on my course, and um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, so it's the it's the same course. She went. She kind of does kind of uh, the non animation. She does kind of narrative stuff. Yeah. So we're we're both studying filmmaking over in Bristol. Um, so yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah. The I can't believe that's your first animation. I think it's, uh, and that was my first observation when I uh, saw it with Chris, the other founder of the festival, was the fact that you didn't try and make it look like a real fly. Yeah. I think that was a really smart choice because as soon as you go down that route, it you've got to make it look a hundred percent real. And if you try and do that, if it doesn't look anywhere near it, it can look like a bad TV effect, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's how I wanted to avoid that. I uh, thought, you know, it wasn't going to be realistic anyway, because it, you know, you don't see flies partying and playing the piano. So I thought, you know, it's got to be, it, I think the cartoon look to it would, would, would match the mood. So yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. And I like, I like the, I, I, won't, I don't want to spoil it, but I like the cut where, with the book and then mm -hmm. it's the, you know what I mean? There's the, the cut in it. Yeah. It works so well. And um, yeah, I think your shot composition, everyone that watches it, like uh, there's a filmmaker, Ian Rayburn, he uh, made a film called Days For, it's a horror film really really dark super high production uh, value but uh he loved it he seriously loved it and i'll let him know it was your first animation because he won't he won't believe that <laughs> <laughs> um, and i've got uh, on the second or third viewing um the best best detail you've put in was the shadow inside the light yeah so did yeah. that kind of thing take a long long time to do yeah yeah that took a long time to edit um it's Is that like rotoscoping to... or something? Yeah, so it's just all simple, like keyframing in After Effects. Um, so I was just, it was the, the shadow was just a shape layer, and um, I was just hand animating it, basically, um, Maybe, and then yeah. just repeating it on a loop. Yeah, superb. And um, was the animation of the, the kind of pulsating screen on the music scene, was that uh, all After Effects as well? So that, that shot was actually, I set up my phone, and then played like some flashing images on that. Oh, great. Like on a YouTube clip or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I just opened up a YouTube clip that was flashing and then used that as like a dance floor kind of thing for him. And was there anything on that uh, screen when you were on YouTube or was it just like strobing white light? Because um, I shot it in color. It was just flashing colors. Um, but then obviously I edited it into black and white. So uh, what, was the, what was behind the choice of the black and white? Is it like just preferred or...? Yeah, I, I have a thing for black and white. I shoot most of my stuff in black and white. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's just... Um, it's beautiful. It's, it's the light and shadow. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's just... Um, it's a nice way to focus on the shape and form of the footage. And I think it also helps blend the, um, the fly into the scenes well as well. Yeah, the fly really... It, it popped really well because it's black. It popped yeah. really well. Um, what did the fly look like in, I don't want to kind of break your film apart, but I'm really curious about your techniques. What did the fill, uh, fly look like in color? Was it black? Was it black and white as well? Yes. Yeah, the same, same color as black. Yeah. Just a black body with um, white wings. Yeah. And did that stick out a bit too much? Yeah, it, it was, I mean, it, obviously it was always meant to look not realistic, but then at that point it just looked too fake that it just didn't, it was kind of distracting. So um, the black and white again, yeah, kind of just helped with the, uh, the blending of it. So uh, what year are you in, in your, on your course? So just finished second year, going into the final year. And without kind of spoiling it for your lecturers and that, what's your, uh, what's your grand idea for your film for your third year? Have you got any ideas? Um, no, I don't, I don't really have any ideas. I mean, um, I think I, the, the thing I want to go into is cinematography. So, um, well, uh, rather, than, rather yeah. than writing, directing, yeah. I think your cinematography, I think you've done it. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll send it to a cinematographer friend of mine who works on TV. He's done, he's worked on feature films, things for GQ and all sorts. And mm. he, he's, he's picking, what is it? 
he's picking vegetables at the moment because he can't work what he does. He used to right. work on a DIY SOS as a second camera operator. And he's got a really visual eye and I think he'll really dig your film. And the shot choice was, did you spend a long time kind of, did you storyboard it at all? Or just, just kind of, uh, I mean, kind of like I don't, house? if I'm doing a solo project, I don't usually storyboard um, just because I, I usually have the vision in my head. Um, but the only time I do storyboard is if it's a group project, because then, you know, you know, you've got to make sure everyone's on the same lines and everyone's visualizing the same thing. But, for me, when I shoot my own stuff, I don't usually, don't usually storyboard it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because you're not like trying to sell the idea to someone else. You're not kind of coaching them through it. That yeah. does make a lot of sense. Um, what did you, uh, what were you, was it more theory or did you produce films in your first year as well? Uh, we did produce films. Uh, it, it, there, was, there was a little bit of theory, but yeah, most of it was practical. Um, that's why I ch chose to do the uh, Bristol course because they advertised it as mostly being practical. Um, yeah, that, that's important, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like theory can only get you so far. And uh, that's where I went. I went uh, practical. I studied in Manchester and it's so much more fun. The collaboration process yeah. is, is fantastic. You, grow, you know, you kind of, you shed uh, friends throughout your life, but kind of production friends and uh, crew, it's, uh, it's essential, isn't it? You know, it's only so much you can do on your own. Like shooting, if you're doing a project where you're shooting yourself, it can be very tricky if you don't have like a monitor, for instance, or something. Yeah. So it's yeah, I, I quite enjoyed that collaboration. I think that was the biggest thing I drew from my uh, years at university was that, and and more so on on recent projects. Um, have you shown it to any of your kind of um, course leaders or anything like that at all? Your film. Uh, yeah, well, I, I've sent it off because uh, there was a deadline a, a week ago. I sent it off. I've not heard anything from my lecturers, but I've had really positive feedback from um, you know, friends and family. And um, yeah, it's been it's been really well received. I was quite surprised at how you know how well people received it. So um, yeah, it's pretty I happy in that. Yeah. Those little details and um, the sound, like little, really really smart choices with the sound. So is that is that something you did? Did you record sounds whilst you watched your film back? Yeah, so all the sound and music I recorded all afterwards. So I edited it. So I, I went through the process of animating first onto the raw clips in After Effects. And then then once I'd done that, I put it all into Premiere and just edited it into a story. And then afterwards went through with my guitar and keyboard and recorded all the music and sound effects in the room, basically. Do you know what would be nice? I don't want to spoil it, but it'd be a nice to see a sequel. But you yeah. have the humans that live in the same house. Right. And possibly an animation of the fly or a fly or rel relative of the fly that lurks around the house or behaves differently or observes mm. the people in the house. That'd be quite a cute little uh, sequel to it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that's your kind of first animation and... Uh, is that? Do you think you'll be doing animation in your third year as well? No, no. I'm probably strictly just cinematography. I mean, um, I, 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 you know, I really enjoyed, um, you know, making this. But at the same time, it does make you realise how much effort goes into animating. Um, and mine, yeah. you know, retrospectively, is pretty simple. Um, and you know, it's a, a, a long process. I mean, I probably made it longer than it should have been because it was my first time, but. Um, yeah, it just puts into perspective how much effort goes into, you know, making an animation. Yeah, definitely. Uh, did you write the music for it as well? Yeah, I just just um, recorded it on my guitar and just on the and keyboard. Did you do the uh, dance beat as well? The uh, yeah, yeah, very cool, man. Yeah, I think once people realise this is where if you produce a strong film like this, other people will kind of garner uh, interest from other filmmakers as well. Uh, even on your course and they'll kind of want to work with you because they're inspired by something you've made. And uh, yeah, I think your course leaders will love it. And mm. yeah. And we're, um, I'll say to Tamsin because she's helping us with some of the design work of the posters. So Tamsin and I think it's James. Do you know James at all? I think he's, oh, in, I think he's from another university. Well, she, uh, she, she's known him for years and they're designing individual posters for every film. 
And then right. we're sending out those posters and the overall posters to all the people that have submitted films. So okay. you'll have a you'll have a unique one off poster for your film as well. That's brilliant. And they look like the samples they've sent, the the first drafts are amazing for three films they've already done. Oh wow. Nice. So yeah, it's just like a little thank you for everyone that submitted their films. So we've had yeah. films from Canada, US, France, Germany, Australia, wow. is Israel yesterday, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah. And they vary from a great animation like yours to science fiction, horror, a really dark one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then there's love stories. There's uh, an animation by a 10 year old uh, locally wow. in Chester here. And she did a uh, stop, like stop animation on an iPad and she lost 10 hours of her work. And th- because it was all sandboxed within one app and there's, oh, no way, there's no way to retrieve it. And then she did it again and it's better the second time. Yeah. Uh, so she persevered with that, but you kind of get a stamp or a feeling how people are getting on by the type of films they're making, and you get a real sense of who they are by the comedy, by what they're trying to create. You know, yeah. and, uh, when you see the other films, I think you'll definitely get a real sense of that. Mm. But no, it's it's something you should uh, certainly be proud of. Um, what I'll do, I'll show you a couple of these films actually. Because I'm trying to, what I've realized is I can, um, the, when I show you this, it gets embedded into the Zoom recording. So it's a good way to kind of get a barometer of how other people are thinking about these films. So where are we? I didn't realize how, we got 31 submissions so far. And we were aiming for like up to 20. We didn't realize how many we'd get. How many you'd get through, yeah, and yeah. We're going to try and do it next year as well. Um, and then but kind of move away from, the, obviously, the ice, the covid aspect of things and being more positive you know it is very positive um but we're gonna try and uh, do it next year as well yeah that's cool so where are we there we go so submissions so which one should i show you yeah i think it was rhiannon said that uh Oh yeah, he loves black and white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I oh, think yeah. I'm kind of known that you need to to be the uh, the black and white guy. Yeah. Yeah, that that's that's the reason for the roller neck as well, isn't it? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, it's got it's got to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's very very Johnny Cash that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where are we? Oh yeah, you'll dig this one. This is called Keep Calm and Stay Indoors. Do you know the game Fallout? Yeah. It's it's like one of those uh, instructional videos from that. Oh, right, cool. Uh, yeah. Let me show you this screen. On. Okay. Can you see this white screen? Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Okay, so you should let me know if you can hear it when it starts. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. All right, cool. Welcome to the 10 steps of quarantine survival. Step one, if you or any member of your household displays symptoms of the virus, self-isolate for 14 days. Symptoms include a high temperature and a nasty cough. Step two, wash your hands with soap. At least 20 seconds should do the trick. Every time you arrive home and before eating. Step three, when encountering other humans, stay at least six feet apart. That's three steps. Step four, wash your hands. Step five, when shopping, don't be an imbecile and there'll be plenty to go around. Step six, wash your hands. Step seven, only leave the house in the event of emergency or to obtain one form of exercise a day, such as walking or cycling, but nothing too dangerous. (laughs) Step eight, wash your hands. Step nine, make the most of this abundance of free time and turn a negative into a positive. Maybe read a book, learn a new skill, or catch up on that television program everyone always raves about. Step 10, wash your hands. Well, that's it for today. Just remember, keep calm and stay indoors. That's brilliant. I thought you'd appreciate the black and white. Yeah, that's well. really good. Have you noticed that they really perfect, perfectly captured that kind of vibe? It reminds me of. Um, of did, did you ever watch Harry Enfield and Chums? Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminds me of the uh, black and white sketches yeah. that they were doing. That. I like yeah, it's really good. The way he got the frame rate right 
and the and the voice as well and just everything's spot on with it yeah when you look at something like that and uh the movement the frame rate of film shot back then wasn't as it wasn't 24 frames and yeah. it wasn't it was more like 15 something like that yeah yeah, yeah. and his shot choices like of the cat and of him with the thermometer in his mouth yeah it felt very old that way so yeah. uh so we're going to try and interview a lot more of the filmmakers like yourself um and it kind of it gives people a, a voice you know in these kind of crazy times doesn't it mm. yeah i think it's really great that you know you're doing this and and you know people are able to just get creative in the time that they've got now and um yeah i think it's 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 a good way for people to spend the time you know making a film i think um, you know, even people who aren't filmmakers, I think should, you know, just give it a go because it's, you know, it's, it is fun and um, it's a good way to express how you're feeling or, you know, anything like that. So, yeah. yeah that's, that's really well put because you can put your raw emotions on film, uh, on yeah. film quote unquote. Um, but how are you, uh, how are you coping considering, in isolation, considering on your, you're on a filmmaking course and you can't kind of work together in the same way anymore? Yeah, it's it, it's difficult. I mean, the course has just been, you know, there's obviously now turned to mainly writing, um, which I'm, you know, I'm not too fond of. I'm not, I'm not great at writing. You know, that's why I'm doing film, um, and it is, yeah. it, it's tricky not being able to collaborate with other people because you know, you do miss that. Like working in a big group is fun, um, and you know, making a film to collab- collaboratively is is good. But I mean. Apart from that, I think, it, you know, it's actually quite nice to have the time um, to yourself um, and you relax. And I'm, I'm back home in Devon, so it's it's quite relaxing here. And um, Devon's amazing. Yeah, I love Devon. Yeah, yeah. So it's just, you know, nice. To, and I can go out and, you know, for a cycle and, you know, it's, 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 it's all right here. I'm coping fine. Um, and I'm with my family, so it's all good. Yeah, that's really positive, man. And you kind of get some of that vibe and how people are feeling, even if they don't necessarily mean it in the, in the content they're making. Mm. And, um, and it's been an absolute privilege to kind of have yourself and a lot of the other filmmakers submit their films. Mm. So when we received, like, I, we, we didn't know what we were going to get in terms of numbers or quality. And I'm not going to say the quality varies. I think it's gone really dark. Jesus. <laughs> so let me open up my camera. So I've got, oh my God, why is it so dark? Now? Oh, you know what it is? Because I use my screen as a light as well. <laughs> so let's close that. That's better, isn't it? Yeah. I think. I'll change the white balance when I put the raw video on my, on my uh, camera. So basically, yeah. I, shoot, I shoot in raw video for these podcasts, which is ridiculous. Yeah, that's, that's a large part, yeah. The file's like, on that last one was 160 gig. <laughs> which is ridiculous so i can i can change the white bands i can you know you know you know the score with raw yeah yeah so um what um what sony camera do you shoot on i mean i've just got an a6300 so you know, oh, that's, that's a nice though it's a nice kind of you can put that anywhere basically yeah yeah it's a great camera it's um you know small portable and it captures some really nice footage um i'm hoping to upgrade at some point i'm thinking of going to a black magic but i haven't quite got the funds for that yet that, that's what i've got here this, yeah. So this is a pocket 4K. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. is. I'm. I'm so happy with it. And for the thousand pounds it costs, and it gives you a full license of Resolve. Yeah. It, I've, I've been exceptionally happy with it. And uh, one of the films called Days, the horror film, um, that is shot on a uh, black magic pocket. Uh, I'm not sure which pocket. It might be one of the cinema cameras, 4K cinema camera. You know the kind of box gray, kind of gray edges you put um, an SSD inside. Yeah. It's one of those and what you get out of it even with photographic lenses like i have is it feels like a thicker image yeah um, it feels like a kind of something very kind of tangible about it and you know i think you would i think what you've got out of your camera you kind of squeeze the best out of your camera in your film mm. um you know what a really kind of uh horrible side of me would want to see the color version of your film <laughs> don't show it though don't show it <laughs> I'd love to see that, yeah. And I've got to say that, yeah, the scene with the, honestly, this is the, yeah, you you wouldn't, but other other filmmakers that I qualified with or I got a grade with in university a few years ago, some of them wouldn't have, wouldn't have put that shadow in. For instance, they're the little details that make the film, mm. make it more believable. 
And yeah, the first choice of hitting the window, everyone has seen that. So if you can make that connection in future films and future content, then you've kind of, you've really stepped it up. Yeah. And I think that you'll, you'll probably process what you create in a, in a more methodical way because you've made something, you know, really unique on your own. And it's, it's really tricky to do because look what uh, Rhiannon's done with her film neighborhood. She kind of mm-hmm. got a group together and uh, gave it, gave a different brief to each of them or a similar brief and you can achieve things in big groups and you can achieve a lot on your own. Yeah. So it's a, it's a tricky one, man. And I really appreciate you coming on board and uh, being part of the festival as well. Yeah. So no worries. I appreciate you, you know, running this. It's really great to have something like this, you know, in a time where so many people are, you know, panicking and, and are scared. It's a good way to forget about what's going on. And, you know, what's the, um, what's the, is everyone pretty much okay in terms of social distancing in Devon? Uh, or yeah, are people I mean, a bit crazy. Yeah, I mean, Devon's pretty safe. I mean, everyone lives so far apart in Devon anyway because it's just mainly field. So uh, that's you know. that's the dream. That's what I yeah. want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's quite. You know, we've not had many cases down here, so it's pretty it's pretty safe. But um, yeah, everyone's sticking to it. You know, it, it, there's only a few people out and. You see people out walking and, and and stuff, but yeah, it's overall it's been fine down here. Yeah, um, considering you ha- you probably have uh, time to watch a lot of kind of content online, um, what are what are your kind of what are your main influences in film? Or who do you love? Who do you like watching? What do you like watching? I mean, uh, see, this is the thing is I I've ne- I, I've always struggled to f- find who who's my favourite my favorite filmmaker after I've never been able to settle on one one person I mean I I'm, I'm very I, I almost watch every genre of, of film or TV series but um, a lot of the time I do like just going to, to watch comedy um, you know TV TV comedy um, so yeah like Alan Partridge uh, yeah, like <laughs> Harry Enfield you know all yeah. that stuff that's stupid comedy but it's um you know, it's just, it's a good way to lift the mood. Um, in terms of like feature films and stuff, I think, um, you know, the Coen brothers and, um, you know, uh, I mean, Edgar Wright stuff as well, really like, I know his stuff's kind of overused in the student film kind of area, but I really like his films. I mean, you know, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz are two absolute classics. Yeah, I did a, a very small, which one was it? It was, I did a very small amount of work on Hot Fuzz. I did some running work with some, uh, uh, some sound effects and that. And I got to see some, uh, some early cuts and it was, it was, it was so cool, man. It was when I had that work experience in London, it was one of the best times. So if you get, if you get kind of post-production or TV uh, work experience out of your course and then you step it forward, then just keep, keep at it. A friend of mine years ago uh, worked on Band of Brothers and she's oh, gone to she's gone to bigger bigger and better things now as well. So yeah, if and I always make I would always highlight if you've got the time, making your own content is is super important because your understanding of film and the production of it it will increase tenfold when you make your own. Like we were speaking to um, a writer from um, I think it was it'll kill me. To, I think it's Toronto. Yes, that we uh, that's where he's based with his wife, and he's a script writer, but as soon as he started making his own films and right and not just writing it, but directing it, shooting it, all of that, he had a great understanding of what he was writing as well and how it worked mm. in terms of timing, that kind of thing. So cinematography is one of the, my favorite things, but if you can kind of create more content and reinforce your cinematography work, then I think that'll kind of stand you in good stead going forward. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, Roger Deakins, he's a, he's a bit of a god in terms of cinematography. Yeah. So when it comes to Coen Brothers movies, yeah, you've got, that's a good start. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, I was, uh, I was an extra on 1917. Oh really? That's Roger, amazing. Yeah. Deakins was, uh, was on set there. So it was really cool to see Did him. Did you see him working? Yeah. 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 So he'd walk into the scenes when we were doing it and, um, I was part of the, uh, the big scene as well when he's running along and explosions. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. And I was in the uh, I was in the uh, the same row as the guy that tripped him up because he accidentally knocked into him and bumped him over like the actor over, um, and that was uh, that was quite funny because uh, 
you know, he comes running back. He's like, oh, I've messed up the shot, I've messed up the shot. Because only had like four takes for the... Uh... You'd sh- you'd sh- sorry to swear, but you'd shit yourself if you did that on a Oh, movie. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did. He came back and he was shaking. He was like, oh, I've messed up the shot. But yeah, it was... Um... Oh my God, that's amazing. But yeah, it's, that was an amazing experience, actually. So um, that, that's... Stick that on your IMDb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah. don't don't forget it because when I I worked on a a Piers Brosnan feature film a few years ago, it's, it wasn't a huge film, but like I'm on the IMDb not because out of choice, but it's part of the production crew, a post production uh, assistant, and I wear it as a badge of honor. It's the only feature film I worked on, <laughs> yeah. um, but it's like it's something really fun, and you meet so many interesting people. Oh yeah, yeah. Like even even just you know not just but other extras or background actors. Yeah, it, it's really fascinating the process because one of the other filmmakers, uh, Courtney, she's based in uh, Canada again with her husband, and they both worked on. Do you know the series Suits? Yeah. So, Courtney, hopefully, if Courtney's seen this, I get this right. Uh, is that she? worked with the head of the background actors. So the kind of background wrangler, you know what I mean? Getting them in position, yeah, yeah, yeah. making sure they're wearing the right thing and all of that. And they worked on that series for five, uh, five years. So, and she's met, you know, the, the biggest people and all of that. And you get to work on uh, other stuff. And her and her husband will work on a series called Nightmare Alley that got uh, canned because of uh, the situation. That was, I can't pronounce his first name. The, is it Mexican uh, director Del Toro? You know, that did Shape of Water. Oh, so, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she moved on to that with her husband. And it's, you know, like even that bit of experience, just keep your ears open and just soak soak it all up because it's very, like you saw Deakins on set. Yeah. And you want to be a cinematographer. That's like, you know, that's... That's the, the, the peak, isn't it, really? Yeah, in terms of... He's a he's a rock star. I've been called like Tamsin and James a rock star because of their efforts they've been putting in for this design work. But, you know, Deakins is a real rock star, isn't he, in terms of film? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And, like, yeah. he can make, like, um, in Sicario, in the first Sicario, I don't think he shot the second one, but in the first one, there's the scene where the... Uh, soldiers are just about to cross the border at night and they're in yeah. silhouette and then they go into yeah, that such a beautiful shot that one yeah it seems simple but it's not no you know what I mean and Deakins loves overcast weather because it must have been overcast most of the time right not well yeah but they had to wait for it to be overcast but it, we were shooting in June like May and June so it was scorching sun um, and we were sat in a white trench in in World War One costume <laughs> So it was, it was horrible. Like it was really hot, but yeah, there was some days where we wouldn't shoot anything. We'd go in for, you know, a 10 hour day and they wouldn't shoot anything. It would just be all rehearsals because the clouds, you know, weren't, weren't over the sun. Cause obviously, cause they had to stitch it to make it look like one shot. Um, yeah. They, you know, they needed the consistency and the light. Um, so yeah, but to see that operation uh, was just, was quite something because, you know, you know, there's never really been a film that's achieved that one take shot so perfectly. Um, no, it, not really. I mean, but, I mean, uh, Birdman did it, but I mean, just to the extent that 1917 managed, it was just, it was on a whole other level. It was crazy. That is, so how did you, how did you get that gig? I, I saw an ad on Facebook um, and I went along to an audition with a mate and they literally just took our photos and, and then I got through and then there was a couple of more auditions. There was a, I was a physical audition and then yeah I managed to get in and I was on set for about three weeks um wow that's like, a chunk of time man yeah it was a long time um, that's a long time because I thought you know normally if that had been a simple setup it'd be more like a week at most yeah because the other gigs like the other ones I've done have been yeah week week max um but yeah this one was just was particularly long because you know it took the amount of detail that the they setups had isn't it yeah, it was it was hours and hours of just setting up and making sure everything's lined up right, and um, you know resetting the scene, making sure everyone's in the same position. So you know continuity and everything. So so just, that that maximizes what your friend was talking about in terms of tripping that fella off. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and especially on that scene as well. You know, they only had four sets of these massive explosions. You know, and we were told. Oh not, really? Yeah, yeah. So and and they would they took about an hour. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. That's fast. Was there much, uh, from your experience, was there much additional light on, on uh, those big locations? No, no, there wasn't. There was, it was ba- basically all natural light. I mean, they would, I think it helps the fact that they were filming on the, uh, the new Ari. It was like the mini. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, the latest God, one. Yeah. And, and uh, those Ari signature primes as well. Yeah, I think they had a 35 on there. And it was just the yeah, most I think it was uh, thing 20, 27 or 28 and then a 35. And he said, I think Deakin shot for an Ari interview. He said that they're the only two lenses they used. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, there's an expensive piece of kit. But yeah, it was... Um, and the, the seeing the guy with the, this massive stabilizer as well, that, that when it came past you, like you could hear it whirring because it, you know, all the, all the things going on in it, just as wow. yeah, crazy. You, kit, you, that's very cool, man. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for you, but internally jealous as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's very cool because you've seen the best, probably definitely the most famous, but yeah, the best cinematographer, at least in the UK, yeah. possibly worldwide. For sure, yeah. Yeah, and he's because look at look at Blade Runner. Look at the setups for Blade Runner. Yeah. When you see those light setups, it's like, yeah, you know, no one else is allowed to do that. Like, I, has he done June? I really hope he's done June as well. The new one, you know, the new uh, Denny Villeneuve film. Oh, I haven't seen that. No, there's uh, there's there's production shots of it. So it's a remake of the oh. um, oh, what's the what's the filmmaker made Twin Peaks called? Uh, David Lynch. Yeah, it's a remake of the David Lynch film. It's it's oh, drawing right. from the original book, uh, than the film, than than a remake. And oh, the okay. cast is stellar, but it's science fiction again. But it looks it looks unreal. And Deacon, yeah. Deacon's is I, I love it. I yeah I can't get enough of him. Yeah, and, his work's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, he's got that bright white hair, hasn't he? Oh yeah, he's got that look. You know, you you know it's him when you see him. Yeah. Cool. So uh, you were saying that you worked on other gigs as well. What kind of what kind of stuff was that? Uh, yeah, again, it was just extra stuff. I mean, a couple of the films aren't out yet, so I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. Oh no, yeah, don't don't say anything, mate. Yeah. Allowed to name them, but um, yeah, it, it just they weren't as big scale as 1917, but um, yeah, similar stuff, just extra work. It's a I, it's a really great way, like you said, you meet so many. So like a lot of the extras are all creatives as well. You know, they're the filmmakers, they're, they're yeah. music producers and things. They're all just trying to get on set and get the experience. So, um, and yeah, and, and, you know, it's a great way to talk to like crowd ADs and, and, you know, just people on set. Net- just, networking is the number exactly, yeah. one thing in the world, man. Yeah. Yeah. And a friend of mine, he does a lot of TV adverts and he worked on Peaky Blinders. He's in, uh, he's effectively in Tom Hardy's gang. He's only in a, a couple of scenes or so. And it's when Tom Hardy first appears in the show and there's a, there's a tracking shot that's going backwards and it, the doors are opening and there's all the bat whiskey barrels everywhere. And a friend of mine's, you know, on a clipboard and he turns around, and he's right near Tom Hardy and I was asking him about Hardy and he was saying it was so intense on set. But as soon as it's off set, he was like the nicest dude in the world because he had his dogs with him and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, you only ever hear positive things about some of these people and yeah that experience must be is great like the experience i had in london for three months was on post-production i was asked to stay the rest of it but would have had to deferred my third year and on hindsight i should have deferred it because yeah. the experience would have been oh we want you to stay for the rest of the time during post-production and i, t- I took that as a massive a massive plus uh but yeah it was it was such good fun and it definitely even if you just take a tiny element of it it informs your own filmmaking and and your yeah. own attention to detail. And uh, yeah, just think back about those days of how much effort Deakins goes in and the rest of the yeah, crew. Exactly. Yeah. And then if you can take that, I'm not saying, oh, you know, go to that extreme, but if you can put in another 10% of effort and then be influenced by what you've seen on set, it, it'll really push your work as well. Mm. Um, so what are, you, um, what are you currently watching? What's your kind of your jam at the moment? What am I currently watching? I mean, I've not had too much time to watch stuff right now due to due to uni work. Um, but I've been watching Parks and Recreation with the family. That's the only thing I can think of right now that I've been watching. Amazing. So it's just a I just love that show. It's brilliantly written. Um, yeah, I think. Um, oh, I, I just finished watching This Country as well. I don't know What's where that? You've seen. This Country. Yeah. What's um, that? Yeah. So it's a. Uh, it's like a, it's a, it's a show about these two people in the Cotswolds. It's just like a mockumentary. 
um, about their life in the Cotswolds and just you know these two people trying to you know make time and, and do stuff living in this small village um, and it's just it, uh, one of the best comedy series I think I've seen it's just oh, so I'll check that out yeah so accurately portrayed because growing up in a village you know you know these people like it's like it's they purposely uh, perfectly like captured what it's like to live yeah. in a small village in the middle of nowhere so you must so, have loved uh, hot fuzz oh yeah yeah that was good yeah that's it it's just got that kind of it's similar to devon that kind of you know village kind of feel because it is yeah, just yeah, yeah. so accurate to what that's like um it's quite it's just yeah it's really funny that what kind of um what what's that like to kind of grow up in uh, that kind of uh, village scenery? Um, it's great. I think um, it, it's it's. I don't I don't know what it would be like to grow up in a city. I mean, I don't think you, you get so many more things to do here, like going out and being able to just you know go with your mates and go go up onto the moor or you know go out and onto a field and just relax and, and mess about. It's um, you know there's so much space, but at the same time. Um, you, you know it can be very isolating i know a lot of people get very isolated because um you know there isn't so many people in close proximity to them um, yeah but, is there um is there a stronger sense of community now yeah i think there, there seems to be i mean there's always been i feel like in small villages you always get a sense of community anyway because it is so small um but yeah i think i feel like this has really brought people together and um yeah there's yeah in that in that in that sense yeah for sure oh, that's good man i'm glad i'm glad with you you're with your family in a nice safe place as well because mm. it's like i live on a this is a it sounds like something from a horror film because i'm a huge horror fan it's uh it's an old obviously it's an old army base but it's yeah. a it's an army base so two-thirds of it is still the army and the rest was sold privately because the land's technically owned by a private company right so this is what we're sitting in now is a, a, an officer house and then these are all, they're not being converted. It's just, they've been done up a bit. And we spent a lot of time and money on, on doing it up. And this street feels like Haddonfield in Halloween. And when we step out, the sense of community was really nice already. But people have just, it's, it's like when the Olymp, do you remember the Olympics in London when they were on? And they're mm -hmm. kind of, I, when I worked in Chester, the sense of positivity and community was really strong then. And I think in a, one of the green shoots out of it is stronger community uh, out of this now. And we like, I'm talking to my neighbor more. I've had a cup of tea over the fence with her cause she's on her own now. Husband died recently. And it's just nice to be able to do small things for people. Yeah. I, I, I'm stuck at home. I'm, I'm very grateful to still be working. Um, and my partner, she works for the NHS. So she goes out, her routine's pretty similar to, as she was before, but her stress levels obviously through the roof. Yeah. But mine is working at home, uh, doing support for students and members of staff. <clears throat> and it, it feels so odd going outside. It really does. Like we went to the bank yeah. today to sort out some account things. And <laughs> I felt like I, you know, I don't know if you've seen Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom where all the kids run out of the palace yeah, yeah, I felt like one of those kids, like yeah. the sunshine and everything, you know. So, it, yeah, it it's, does feel odd being as it almost feels so wrong, you know. When you do leave, you're like, oh, God, you know, you know, it just it, it's an odd thing. But I think it has brought people together, and um, I think it's made us realise a lot of things as well. Um, you know, like you know that a lot of work can be done from home. Um, you know, absolutely and, right. You know, how um, how do you feel about? This isn't like a, a question about your particular university, but how how difficult has the support and working the digital learning? How is how, how have you coped with that? How is that working for you? I think the uni's response has been pretty good, actually. Um, I think uh, I, I've I mean on my course I've had support. I've, you know, lecturers are always doing. We've got Zoom calls and stuff. We still have lectures, and um, you know, so that's all still there and. Uh, is so, Zoom is Zoom the kind of main the main uh, video chat service you use? Do you use Teams at all or Skype? No, it's all Zoom. That's uh, it's, uh, they've they've done well out of this. I don't think anyone knew. Oh Zoom. my god! Yeah, <laughs> yeah they just exploded. Now everyone on the earth is using Zoom. Did you so. did you know about Zoom before six weeks? No, ago? I've never heard of it. Never, heard, never of it. heard of it. Where did that come from? It's as though no. they knew. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe Zoom started it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, imagine that conspiracy. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I I never heard of that. What's this Zoom? And then I heard about hundreds of calls. Yeah. And I heard, then I heard about hacked Zoom calls and all that. But yeah, there's just there's a yeah. That's a good conspiracy. That is it. <laughs> that's hilarious man yeah well i really appreciate coming on uh, ollie and your film's fantastic mate and we're gonna try and figure out how to showcase we want to showcase the films to the other filmmakers first because it, we want that sense of community and that's what i get more and more from each of these uh interviews we do is the sense of community and um, building contacts as well you know like other filmmakers a lot of there's a lot of actors involved that have gotten involved in writing their own stuff and producing their own material and it'd be nice to kind of share all of that out and have a list of you know like a big list this is everyone that made their film and uh, that's what Tamsin and uh, James are producing they're producing posters for each film so we're going to have like a little brief about uh, the each filmmaker the poster of their film and then we could have a nice you know a really nice a way to present it yeah and then we'll try and maybe maybe have different time slots for you know these kind of watch along parties on facebook yeah yeah, we'll try, yeah we'll try and do something like that because i know netflix have just brought out netflix party now netflix they? party yeah yeah so we're going to try and do something i think because of the time zone differences is huge yeah because yeah. uh, Australia's, you know, next day, basically. We're going to try and do watch-long parties so groups of people can get to know each other and uh, maybe just like a basic little digital hangout and then watch the films and, you know, like a little, like you would do if you were uh, had a little festival at a cinema, so that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So sense of community and atmosphere, that's what we're going for. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, that'd be great. But, yeah, thank you very much, Ali. Really appreciate uh, coming no on the podcast. Thanks, and, uh, it, we release these uh, once a week and then we've got Tom and Steffi that are uh, fire eaters and slackline walkers. Their film, we're talking to them. Their, their podcast has been released on Saturday and then yours will be in a few weeks. Um, but yeah, really appreciate it and your, your film's fantastic, mate. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well, you have a good day, mate, and uh, yeah, stay, stay safe and enjoy the outdoors. Brilliant, yeah. Thank Devin's you. amazing. What you said about going on the moors uh, a moment ago is I, the last text I sent to anyone was my future sister-in-law and she's coming to drop some stuff off. And I put in, in quotes, stay clear of the moors, you know, from American wealth in London. Why so is it's, that? It's basically the, the people in, I don't, I think it might be Yorkshire or somewhere like that, where the, wherever the start of the film set, all the villagers in this pub tell these two American backpackers uh, to stay clear of the moors and it's because there's a werewolf and they get attacked by the werewolf one gets killed one survives right. but he ends up turning into a werewolf so that's where the phrase comes from stay clear ah, of the moors. Okay. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> check that out that's a good film uh yeah great film anyway have a good day mate yeah you too and we'll Cheers. keep in touch we'll uh, we'll let you know about uh updates and such like through email and instagram and that yeah brilliant thank you very much see you soon mate take it easy Cheers. stay safe bye Cheers. Bye. you too bye, -bye.